One of the challenges that artists run into when painting on paper, whether using watercolor or acrylic paints, is trying to keep the paint lines as clean as possible. Of course, we're all familiar with masking tape, but which type is the best tool for the job? Today on Mixed Media Masters, we're gonna take a closer look at masking techniques when painting on paper. And we're also gonna learn how to get better results and also end up not destroying the masterpieces we're trying to make. Hello makers and thanks for joining me here at Mixed Media Masters. You know, when I'm working on a paint project, there are times I'm looking to keep my paint lines clean and neat. Just because we're creating abstracts doesn't necessarily mean we're just splashing paint around. Whether you're painting with watercolors, acrylics, or even inks, you're introducing a fair amount of wet to your paper. As we already know, wet can make paper a lot softer. This can mean that the tape we're using to create clean lines can turn around and end up actually destroying the piece we're working on if we're not careful. Now, there are a number of different masking tapes on the market, and they range in their stickiness. A number of these tapes are designed for high heat use, a number are designed for more industrial uses, such as masking paint jobs on car bodies, home design and decor, and simply holding things down together. Oftentimes, the different types of tapes are color-coded as to what kinds of temperatures they can withstand before the adhesive breaks down as their level of stickiness. For example, 3M Brands notes that their blue and green tapes offer heavy and medium adhesive qualities, while their yellow tape is designed for more delicate work. Unfortunately, this color coding often fails between different brands, as there's no consistency between what a color means and what the adhesive qualities are. Now, in our work, especially on paper, we want to be very careful we don't use too heavy an adhesive tape, as it may cause our paper to tear when we try to remove it. Now, to test this out, I'm going to try a couple of different tapes here, and I want to be able to create a few boxes that we can paint in and see how well the masking process goes down, as well as get a sense of what happens when we try to remove our masking tape. I'm going to start with uh, some pretty heavy-duty stuff. Now, this is Scotch brand masking tape, and this is actually kind of an interesting tape. It is made out of plastic, and uh, it's designed to have really sharp edges. So that's really kind of its claim to fame is you want masking, but we're gonna give you some very sharp edges. So let's get that in there like that. And we'll get a nice sharp edge. I'm gonna just create some, some basic shapes that we can paint in here. Let's see, we'll make something uh, maybe not necessarily perfectly square or rectangular. All right, and uh, there we go. That's gonna be a, a triangle shape that we're gonna be creating over here. So that's one of the things I wanna mask in here. Now, the next tape I'm going to introduce in here is, uh, is this tape. This is frog tape. Now, frog tape is designed uh, quite literally to be a painter's tape as opposed to any other kind of real use. And uh, the reason it's a painter's tape is it's coated with what is known as an SAP, which stands for Super Absorbent Polymer. Think of the content that's in a disposable diaper, those beads that absorb lots of water. Very similar principle to this. And the concept here is that when we use this tape in our painting, as the, the wetness in the paint comes in contact with the tape, in turn, the tape will swell up in those areas and kind of seal the edges, edges shut. Now, that sounds good in, 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 in principle, in theory. Let's see if we can actually make it happen. So I'm going to make another shape right there with a few pieces. Now, we also have um, this tape here. This is also from Frog, and this is designed to be a, uh, a more delicate tape in the sense that the adhesive is going to be less uh, tacky in this. So I'm gonna create something over here. Let me, again, let's just create a quick shape using this tape. I'll make something a little more rectangular this time. And bring that over there, and all right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the challenges you run into is a lot of times these brands, you know, yellow means del delicate. Well, guess what? Here, here's Scotch, uh, I'm sorry, here's the 3M version of the delicate tape. Not so yellow. So we have the purple tape uh, that may work out here. And uh, I'm going to grab this and I'll create another shape. And you can also feel when you're working with the delicate tape, oftentimes the paper is a little bit thinner as well. So 
So designed more for up close and and masking certain things. I'll just again let me create something kind of interesting here. Who knows? Maybe our masterpiece will be a, a study in weird colors and shapes pushed together. Okay. And uh, by the way, while we're while we're in here. I have this another another roll of uh, of yellow tape. Now this particular tape uh, has no markings on it, so you know that's the best brand. If you have to ask what kind it is, it's probably something you bought generically. Uh, now it says it's yellow, so can I assume that this is going to be a fantastic uh, tape for the purposes of uh, being delicate to my paper? Let's find out. So I'll get something in here, get some basic shapes, and I'll make this one. More of a rectangle as well. Now, I want to basically test for two things here. One of the things I want to look for is, first of all, how well do these tapes do from a masking standpoint? That's going to be very important. But what we're really testing here is what happens to this piece of paper when I try to take this tape off later. Let's get some paint on this. I'm going to be using some basic black here, just a black acrylic, something that will stand out against the white paper, just allow us to see better on camera what's going on. And let me uh, get my brush in here. And I'm just going to go around and kind of fill in these, these uh, spaces here. There we go. Introduce a little bit of wet into the, uh, into the equation. There you go. There's some wet for you. And you're going to get some, uh, some black as well. And we'll do the same thing for you. All right, and uh, pick up a little bit up here. I think I can fill this in. Let's get some of my extra paint up there. Black does good coverage. All right, so there we are. So we have filled in our different shapes with our color of choice. And uh, what we need to do now, of course, is uh, perhaps wait for this to dry for a moment if we want to make sure we're going to get those square lines. The overall objective, of course, is to get good, clean masking lines. That's why we're here. That's why I'm using the tape in the first place. But let's give this a second to dry, and then let's come back and see what happens when we try to reveal our work. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Uh, the paint's mostly dry, not fully, but I think it's time enough for us to come in and do our, our reveal. Let's start up here with the first one that we masked in. This is our, our, our sharp, ultra sharp line multi-surface tape. And I'm gonna pull that off of here. And I'm getting a little bit of spill out uh, over here. If you look, and this is one of the things obviously I'm trying to prevent when I do tape things. It's saying, hey, we got some really clean lines, but uh, hmm. yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it really, really didn't tighten down. And it could be just the surface of the paper is rough. There are these nooks and crannies where the paint can, can, can flow under. So that didn't work out as well as I wanted from a masking standpoint, although it came off pretty well. Let's go over here and uh, let's deal with this one here. And I'm gonna pull that and I'm running into a similar issue. Oh, oh, look at that. Massive spill, massive spill here. And uh, yeah, not, not pleased with what's going on here. And also, whoops, there's a problem. And that's one of the things I'm trying to prevent. As I'm pulling along, notice it started pulling the paper up with it. So, oh, I've been working on this piece for hours, hours and hours, laying down all these colors and I'm taking, oh, I'm just so unhappy. Uh, by the way, speaking of which, I have a feeling this yellow tape here is gonna be a bad, bad story. Let's uh, see what we can do with this. This is already feels just so much more adhesive. And looks like we got a little bit of that. I'll pull this up here. And so actually that came up easier than I thought, than I thought. Now we're down to the more delicate tapes. So let's see what happens with these. And again, when I pull these up, all right. And again, see what's happening here? I masked these to get a nice clean line. I'm not getting the results I wanted and I'm feeling really unhappy. Now this one looks like it did a better job, truthfully. The, uh, the yellow tape that we used here, that is uh, frog tape, actually came in the cleanest on some of the lines, but still, you see the spill out here. So, this isn't a great solution. It's not a great solution for two reasons. One, we're not getting the masking effect that we really wanted. And if we really press that tape in, we might get better seal, 
But I will tell you from experience that oftentimes when you're taking the tape off, especially if you've smooshed it down really well, it's going to take the paper with it on its way back. So what can we do? Which is the best masking tape for the work we're trying to do when we're painting on paper? And the answer is none of them. It, it's, it's the sad truth. Now, that's not to say there isn't a solution. And I have the solution right here. It's this guy. It's Scotch Magic Tape. That's right, the same tape used to wrap gifts. Plentiful, cheap, it's plastic, it has straight lines. Let's see what happens if we, uh, if we try doing something with it on the other side of our paper here. Now I'm gonna take my Scotch Tape and I'm gonna do something very similar to what we did before. I'm gonna lay down some lines here. And one of the challenges you'll run into is that, uh, well, this transparent tape is transparent. So sometimes when you're working with it, it's a little hard to see where you've been. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a, a basic uh, four-sided shape here. Okay. And uh, let me grab my paint and a paintbrush again. And uh, let's see if we can do something here. Now I will mention one thing again, because, because this, tape is transparent, sometimes it's really hard to see where the borders are, and you may end up painting outside of the borders. Ask me how I know that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of feel my way around, and I want to make sure that I'm staying within the parameters of my artwork here. And sometimes you might need to lean your face into this and get a, a closer look as to what's going on. I think we're, I think we're, I think we're within the realm here. <laughs> we will find out if that's not the case. All right, let's get some black in here. And we're going to, again, I want to check to see how well this stuff is going to mask as much as anything that we're working on here. All right, looks like we got full coverage. And I think uh, if all went according to plan, I stayed well within the uh, lines of the tape. Now, again, let me give this a few minutes to dry, and then we'll try the same thing here and see if we get better results. Approximately 10 hours later. Okay, the paint has had an opportunity to dry, and I'm going to come in here and uh, let's see if I can find one of the edges and just start peeling up. And I want you to notice that right away, the cleanliness of the lines that we're working with, whoops, looks like I had a little bit of pull out there. Maybe I, I must have missed a section while I was painting, but has just clean lines. The tape came off with ease, no tearing, no threat of tearing in this instance, and just such a clean line. So what we were trying to do with the masking tape is actually gonna happen in this sense. Now, I also wanna mention that, you know, there's nothing wrong with masking tapes in so many other ways. It's just for paper projects, it's not gonna do what we need to do. Now, I will mention one thing just in passing in all fairness, and that is if I had a long strip of, uh, of my scotch tape here, let me put it down on my piece of paper here, and I don't wanna seal that down. If I come in here to take this off, if I were to just pull this off, like, you know, as quickly as I could, the chances of getting some tear out increase, right? So I want to gently pull the tape off whenever I'm doing anything to make sure that the adhesive has time to unstick before I cause any problems. Again, let's see if we can do this badly and see what the results are. Well, it worked, it worked fine, but I have had situations where the scotch tape may end up causing problems for us as well. So your best choice when masking your paper products isn't masking tape at all, but it's this little roll of magic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And please let us know in the comments if you've had any personal experiences and successes with different masking approaches. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you found this video useful, please feel free to hit that like button below and it really helps us out. It allows YouTube to share our videos with more people who really need to see it. Also, we'd love to be able to share this conversation with you going forward. So if you learned anything that might be useful to you in your own explorations as an artist, please feel free to click on the subscribe button. We'll let you know whenever new videos drop in the future. Thanks for hanging with us today at Mixed Media Masters. If you'd like to watch our most recent art creating video, please click here. It's been a pleasure hanging with you and I'll talk to you real soon.